fifteen. Pleasure as always to welcome Tracy Kwan, live from New York. Good evening. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Great, thanks. Looking for. I love it when you like talking about films and books. And of course, we've got the New York Film Festival. That must be awesome. Before we get started on the festival, I just want you guys to know that I posted on the Morning Brew Facebook page a really interesting piece about Hong Kong and how the relationship between cinema and the umbrella movement. Uh, we we are kind of with you guys in spirit, and people have all these different perspectives. So there's a film scholar who specializes in Chinese cinema who's like explained to New York readers, um, you know, what some of the background is through the lens of film. You know, it's just to get for you guys to get a sense of how the rest of the world is looking at you, even though you're very deeply involved that's right awesome. now. That, that's awesome. Do people tend yeah. to... Do, do yeah. people... Um, I suppose understand is a bit condescending to people get why the umbrella has become the icon. It's a functional thing because um, at, at certain stages, the cops were spraying what's called CS foam at people. And it's, it's like a pe- mm-hmm. pepper juice, if you like. And what people were doing to deflect it is upending their umbrellas. You know, instead of curving down, it curved upwards. And of course, it would bounce, right. it would bounce this spray out of their, their direction. So it's, it's a practicality that, that, that sort of spurned this, uh, that, that bore this. Yeah, no, we, 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 I'm very interested in that, and a lot of people in New York have like shared articles about that. Uh, the training and discipline it takes to have a nonviolent movement. It's been incredible, actually. Before we move on to the film festival, I just wondered, you know, I, I've not been massively involved. Who who can be massively involved in every level of this? And boy, oh boy, Tracy, it's multi-layered. Are there any kind of questions that have been popping up? Well, how come the Hong Kong guys are doing this? Is there anything that perhaps you've read or seen? I think there's actually some division. Of, how can I put this? You know, the Occupy movement in New York, yep. it's much farther to the left than your Occupy movement is really a, a liberal movement. And that has created some tension in it, the states between different kinds of um, human rights types and activists. I'll tell you what was contentious, the very use of the word Occupy. I mean, they're two different beasts. Mm-hmm. What, what happened in New York and what's still happening here is very different animals. It's funny, isn't it, how, you know, you as an author, the power of a certain word, and if you change it for another one. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm actually, I find it easier to relate to what you guys are doing. No, no, no great, but anyway, that's, <laughs> the, that's the umbrella thing. It was a practicality, and it seemed to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. let's talk Yeah, about I think it's brilliant. What have you been doing tonight? This, my three favorite films at the New York Film Festival are very female-centered and very much about the role of work in a woman's life, okay. starting at the age of 12 right through to 93. I mean, I was, I was really struck by this thread running through my favorite films. And the first one opened um, here in the States. It's, it's, it's already played in Italy. It's called The Wanders. Mm. And it's a really hot young director, Alice Rohrwacher, who has a German name and a German father, but is also very Italian. She's from Tuscany. And this is a film about a 12-year-old girl who's being groomed as the heir to her family business. And they're out in the countryside. Uh, what I love about this is, you know, they're making organic honey. So there's all this stuff with bees, and, you know, bees are very hot right now. Um, the Wonders. They're making organic honey. Yeah, in the Wonders. And, you know, so but what they show you is, I mean, there is a dark side to this, too, because there's some child labor issues. It's, it's very nice that you're sort of like hippies and you went out into the, in, into the Italian countryside and started making organic honey. But what is really going on? I mean, it's not presented as a super dark story. It's, it's, it's actually very, it's very poignant. I mean, everything's very gray area. But it's, it's funny. You see how these very idealistic, dogmatic parents who, I'm going to call them hippies, even though they don't really look like hippies. You go for it. They're very afraid. They're very afraid that, the, that pop culture will corrupt their children. And, of course, the oldest child, while well, she is going to take over the business, and she's almost like the oldest son. You know how that works sometimes. And so, so when, even though she knows how to run the business up to a point, she's also very attracted to pop culture. So some, there's a very tacky reality show that comes to the area, and they are fetishizing the idea of the traditional family and the traditional family product, you know, the farm, the yeah, yeah. bees, the different sausages, and so forth. And they're going to do a reality show, almost like a contest, like a, like um, when you get voted off the island or something. <laughs> and 
she gets, she's really, really drawn to it, and her father is very much opposed. And it's just kind of beautiful how they show this conflict, but also how important work is in your life, even at such a young age, you know, whether you're an apprentice, as, as she kind of is, or in another film, which I'll talk about later, you know, a kind of elder, like a mentor to everybody else, because you're like 93. So I love the fact that in these three films, we could sort of think about a woman going through eight decades of her life yeah. and what it means to be at work. So in the second film, we have, um, it's called Two Days, One Night, and that's a Belgian film. It's French, but it's really Belgian. And um, Marion Cotillard, who has won the Academy Award for various things, you, you saw her in Fantastic. Um, Contagion. Yeah. Right? You saw her in Contagion and in Blood Ties. And I think of her as this very smoky-eyed movie star. But here, she's completely unglamorous. And the role she plays is a working mom, a, a factory worker, who uh, really, really wants to keep her job. And because of the way it's been set up um, in the factory, she has to. She has two days and one night, hence the title, two days, one night, to convince all of her fellow co-workers at the factory to give up their bonuses, which they need, in order for her to keep her job because okay. there have been cuts. It's, it's, you're really like biting your nails because you want her to be able to keep that job and um, well, that, well that's fantastic she, for starters because you you believe you you you're really in there as a viewer you're with her you are i mean you know it's, it's obviously it's not a glamorous kind of a story but it's very very like it's intense and i mean for example and i think that some of the people in the recent protests could relate to these issues she's afraid that the, the whole family is afraid that they will have to move back into social housing if she can't keep her job. And um, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff about the modern economy. And also the interesting thing, similar to the organic honey in the previous film, is this is a solar panel factory. <laughs> so, I mean, there are some bad management policies and tactics being used in this very ecologically correct factory. I mean, that they're making products that a lot of people buy because it yeah. makes them feel good about doing the good environmental thing. This is actually really excellent something... because a lot, of, a lot of times we hear about fair trade stuff, we hear about ecologically, organically sound stuff and, and there have been news stories to this effect, so it makes sense that somebody's going to do this kind of movie. But what are the conditions under which these things are made? And mm -hmm. are we buying these things and using these things just to feel good? I mean, wh how much of it is just, you know, an emotional trip that we're on? And how much of it is really ethical? Often thought that, you know, when people when when you, you get have. when when particularly you get the bigger health brands and they're like, oh look at us, we're doing our bit for humanity. You do sometimes wonder, don't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, and maybe it's all a little bit true, but it's a serious issue. And another thing that comes up in this in two days, one night, um, is. They show how diverse Belgium is because just she has to go and talk to all the different guys and girls that she works with at the factory, at the plant. So you see all the different ethnic groups that are working in a place like that. Yeah. And people from different levels of education. I mean, nobody there is rich, but some are poor, poor some are more middle class. And also the relationship, again, for working women. So one of the women who she asks to help her has a husband who's kind of abusive, they don't make a big thing out of it. I, I like that they did not do that. They, it's very subtle. But you can see that there's a tension between th this other working woman and her husband, and he's a little bit of a bully. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and that affects the decision she's going to make about whether she can keep her bonus or maybe do something in solidarity with another worker at the plant. This sounds um, to me like it's, it's, it's probably something that millions of people go through, but these are the things that you sort of don't talk about, or, or some people in some societies, they think it's their lot, and the guy thinks it's his prerogative to be a pig. But I, it's, it's fa fabulously interesting how the director really makes you, as the viewer, understand really clearly this issue. Yeah, and interesting to see that someone who has such a glamorous image, Marianne Cotillard, you know, wanted, she wanted very much to be in this film and to work with these guys, the, uh, the Dardenne brothers, who are kind of famous for doing this kind of a, a story. Mm -hmm. um, very realistic 
camera work and, you know, dealing with more social issues and stuff like that. So I, I think a lot of uh, glam girls kind of underneath it all want to do something like this. From, you know, from yeah. Time time. Well, here's an interesting thing for you. I don't know much about the New York Film Festival. I'm, I'm assuming there's like a working theme or a flavour to each year. And, you, you know, you're very much up on sex workers' rights and female rights and all that kind of stuff. Is that what drew you to this? Or is it just because you're a film fan? When I see people talking about work in this way, the central nature of work in a woman's life, um, that does that is a theme that comes up for sex workers. And it's refreshing to see this, you know, being talked about in just all kinds of industries. And and also, you know, you think about it as a as a working woman that very often there are people who want to rescue you from your job or rescue you from something and you like I don't need rescuing. Well, that's how yeah, I mean it's a complicated thing because actually I think that in some ways it might have been nice if the character that Marianne Cotillard could have been rescued. <laughs> Let, let me, <laughs> from this situation. It's a tough situation, but what her husband ends up doing, he cannot afford to rescue her because he's another working stiff. But what he does do, he kind of acts like her shop steward. He, he teaches her how to like try to broker this deal with her other uh, co-workers. Let me ask you something. I want to go take it right back to when Tracy and I first met. I met her through a friend as an author of The Diary of a Manhattan Cool Girl. Now, tell, your, your protagonist was Nancy Chan. Now, tell me how Nancy yeah. dealt with blokes seeming to think she wanted rescuing. Well, I'm going to say something that might be a little bit naughty, but basically if that came up, I think she would exploit the situation. That's what I was thinking you were going to say, because she doesn't need rescue. But that's her job. She's not doing that because she's evil. It's just that that's her job, is to exploit that situation. Was it very tired for her to keep hearing that? Because I'm sure it came up time and time again. It's like the bloke's gone to the SPCA and got himself a new puppy. You know, I'm going to say some people who are very feminist in the industry hate it when that happens. I think it's interesting when that happens. I don't hate it. I don't love it. And my characters all have different responses. So one of Nancy's best friends does let a guy rescue her for about six months, and then she gets sick of it. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's it's okay to try it. I mean, we don't have to be, you know, so liberated all the time. We can let guys take care of us sometimes. Well, fair enough. I mean, we all all need it a little bit. But the point is, um, I just, I just, this is so common. You hear about it in this part of the world. Very different to, you know, the scene in America. But I wonder what it is in men, what the chemistry is in men, apart from the obvious stuff, that makes you want to, I can take you away from all of this. And she's like, get lost. I like my work. Well, but I no, but I think it is a real thing. I think that that a lot of men do want to do that, and it may even be biological. I'm not sure. It's something now, like that. Uh, we're out of time, Tracy. But before we go, just tell us everything we need to see, and I'm sure you'll put it on our Morning Brew Facebook page. Well, the page. third film, the third film that you do need to see when it comes to Hong Kong is Iris, and we, we're out of time. But that's about uh, a 93 year old style maven who is a total icon and who has worked with some Asian. Uh, designer, okay. and it's um, just an amazing, amazing story about somebody who loves her work, and that's what I noticed was, finally, you know, she's 93, she feels lucky to be working. It's not the kind of struggle that it is for a young working mother. Well, let's at least carry on with a little bit of films next week and maybe look at that one. In the meantime, Tracy, always a pleasure to talk to you. Have a lovely week. 